my quarantine isolation bedding. <laughs> so here we are. It won't do it that way. So here we are. Hey, Facebook world. Look who's here from his bed. And I'm in mine. We got Mario. How do you, say, how do you pronounce your last name? I say Gentile. Mario Gentile. But people say Gentile. Genitals. <laughs> gen gentile. You know, all wise guys. But so many people say Gentile. Because I know the Gentiles from the Bible, right? Yeah. So that's why they say Gentile. Hopefully I'm going to heaven. <laughs> you know, if there is one. I, because my name's in the Bible. Yes. I've often wondered if the name Gentile is Jewish. You know what? It's, um, it, like I said, the Gentiles are in the Bible, right? Yeah. And I should know more about it, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Gentile, in Italian, in the Italian pronunciation, Gentile means like gentle, like nice, you know? Oh, you're molto gentile. You're very nice. You're a nice guy, you know? <laughs> hey, guess what? Word has it that you're a huge animal lover. Yes, I am. Absolutely. I was, you know what I was going to do, Lynn? Nope. Before, I was going to, I was just about to take a, an animal rescue class. What? Let me see myself. How do I look here? I look, do I look horrible? No, you look fine. I love the color T. You've got a really sexy color T-shirt on. <laughs> you know, really bizarre color. Like, I don't even know where it came from. <laughs> what is it, like aqua blue or I don't know what it is. Yeah, kind of. It's like that. So what were, what were we saying? I'm sorry. You're, you from, you're from New York. Have you always been from New York? No, I'm from Jersey. I live in New Jersey. I'm in Jersey. Oh, Jersey. I'm sorry. How could I? Um, I same thing. I mean, we we're part of each other, aren't we? New York, New Jersey. <laughs> so has this whole COVID nineteen affected any of your loved ones? I know. I know a couple people it did. I know a few people it did. Yeah. My neighbor up the street and a couple other people from town got it. So it's uh, you know it really sucks. It's a crazy world we're living in, right? We're living through like history books now, right? We're, we're writing our own history books. Yes. This whole, how is it out there? You know what? A friend of mine talked to a, a in Vegas and him and his wife that lived in Vegas, they took a, a, a five mile ride down the strip. Five miles, they saw five people only walking. This is the second time I heard this today. It must be like the tw if you're there and you're actually there and you physically and looking around and feeling it. It's got to be like the twilight zone. It is. Absolutely. It is. Like I walk, I, there's a street, one street off of the strip and I walk there and I, I'm doing comedy with a rolling speaker microphone at 11 o'clock every day and people, oh buddy, you literally have to turn on the microphone really loud and they open up their door to see what the hell's going on. That's funny. That's funny, but it's a good idea. It'd be, it'd be great. You have like a little, uh, I don't know, guitar box, like, you know, like 20 feet in, in front of your, you know, your house and people can throw change in there and uh, <laughs> that'd be great. I, I think this is going to be like the new thing now. I think so many people are going to be, uh, you know, they come up with, with really smart ideas, videos, right? Because yes. Like, now, and, and now, instead of the, now instead of the comedy world being flooded, it's going to be the social media world with sketches, podcasts, um, videos, whatever, you know, whatever they can do. Exactly. Thank God people's porches are more than six feet away from the street. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> That's cool. I like that idea that you perform off your, off your porch or whatever. That's great. It's, it's like you're street performing. You know, you're a street performer. That is, it's incredible. Instead of playing the guitar and making a couple bucks, tips, you know, you're, you're juggling like in Washington Square Park or something. You're doing comedy from your porch. That's cool. <laughs> it's fun. I live here at a, a village, uh, an old motel that's been turned into a veteran's village for veterans to live in, because I'm a veteran. Okay, cool, nice. And we've got three people here that are diagnosed with this uh, 
virus, and they won't stay in, they're not staying in their rooms. <laughs> oh my God, that's, you know, and I've heard stories, I've heard stories about that too, like, uh, people, whatever, like, they're not, they're not really sick, and they go to the hospital, and they get sick, or in a lot of, um, senior homes, right? Yeah. And then some, and you know what, I've heard a couple cases now too that, um, Somebody said that they like their parent caught it because if they were in the senior home. Yes. And the person next, the person next to them in the room had it, but they didn't tell that person, the other person, that they had it. So there's a couple lawsuits going on now because of that, you know. Yes. It's gonna be. So in other words, my friend's mother was was in a room with somebody who had it already, and they never told my friend's mother. And then she caught it, and I think she died. Like, a couple of people died from it. Uh, so, uh, something like that. Sorry. You see me okay, or am I, like, all over the place? We're both kind of all over the place, but that ha that's half the fun. You know, we can't figure out technology, and <laughs> nobody's on the phone to help us, and so that's it. So, you do, you do this show now? How long have you been doing the show for? Well... Two years ago at Harvey's Comedy Club, they let me start interviewing headliners that came through. And then they said, oh, interview all the Portland comics and blah, blah, blah. You know, it grew and grew. And I love interviewing as much as I do getting up on stage. That's great. No, it's a great thing. It's, it, then here you go. This is your other calling, you know? Like, you got to do this now. You got to do this uh, little show, you know? You interview some people and... Uh... I might not. Yeah, so, so I'm. Be entertaining and funny. I might not ever leave my house again. Yeah, right. I was gonna say, the people. There's so many comics now, right? That that aren't working, but the the very few lucky ones are the ones that have like a successful podcast or something else going on. Yes. You know? Yes. They're missing, they're missing out the money. They're missing out on live shows, but if they got something else going on, like I was just talking to Kevin Brennan, or I texted Kevin Brennan. And I, I was asking him, I was seeing if he could collect because they said gig workers can collect. And it's the first time in history that they're allowing people, 1099 independent contractors collect unemployment. Wow. Because of this the pandemic, the status that you have. So they're allowing people to collect. And I thought he was one of them, a gig, a gig worker. And then he mentioned that. He goes, oh, I don't think I can collect because I make because I make too much money on my podcast. I go, oh, that's right. He's got a podcast. Wow. So he's good. Oh. So in other words, he, yeah, he's missing his dates. Uh, well, he was going to be with Louis C.K., I think, and, and, and that got canceled and a couple other people. And then uh, he was actually, it was like, I was supposed to be, it was like Vegas, a, a, a gig with Louis C.K. and uh, Atlantic City. It was like three, two, three incredible gigs. Wow. But now actually got canceled. But at least he's got the podcast, right? Yeah. So so hopefully this will, this will be, you know, take off for you. You know, it'd be nice. Yeah. Well, what I'm hoping for is enough people at the at the major clubs in town will see my interviewing skills and go, you know what? We want someone like you at our club because Harvey's let me do it in Portland, Oregon. I want to do it here in Vegas. That's my, that and I want to give people a voice right now. Everybody's stuck at home and... I want to drag information out of them and put it on the internet. <laughs> so tell me about being an animal lover. That's interesting. Okay. The, la the, la yeah, that's the last thing I was going to say is you are definitely, I love your videos, your sexy videos when you're dancing and you're goofing around and playing around. You are definitely a Las Vegas woman by heart. You definitely are, right? <laughs> yeah. And you look great. And I hope, I hope it takes off. You're, you know? This little interviewing thing. Thank uh, you. At the club or here or wherever, you know. But, okay, Thank you. So now, animal lovers, yeah, I started with the skunks last year, you know, like, I really, uh, I always love, I always like skunks, and the people <laughs> were telling me how, how, like, they become, their great pets, and this and that, and I used to see them in my backyard all the time. So I, I started feeding them, and then, it, you know, they started coming around, like, being cool with me. And then people would call me the uh, skunk whisperer. You're the skunk whisperer. <laughs> and, then, and, and then I was going to do a goofy character, like, I was going to do, like, a parody of Steve Irwin, God Rest His Soul. Yeah. 
you know, the, the crack hunter. And I was like, <laughs> all these beautiful skunks and they're gorgeous, but oh, they got a bad stink, all of my whatever they're going to do. So, and then I was like, you know what? That's, that's really a hacky thing because he, he died and it's not original. And I go, oh, the, what about the Italian skunk whisper? Oh, that's perfect. I'll be original. I can do the accent and I can say funny words and goofy. And, and, and that's what I did. So I, I did that. And then what happened was I, for years I would come in my backyard. I come home. They would scare the hell out of me, come from under my car or come out of the woods. And then I just noticed they never spray, you know what I mean? And then I found that only for last resort, they really don't want to spray you. They will, they will, they will, um, give you a lot of warnings first. So they're really a docile, cool animal. I mean, and, but if, if they got to defend their life, if a dog comes charging at them and it's going to rip them apart, you know, it's like, hey, here, here's, here's spray, you know, here's looking at you, kid. Here's, you know, here's some spray. It's like they're built in gas. It's like they're built in tear gas. They're built in uh, mace, you know. And, uh, was, the line was, uh, you know, what am I going to do? If a, kid, if a dog comes flying at me, you know, here's spraying you in the face, kid. What am I going to do? You know, i got to defend my life, so. So, and then the girl, this girl that I was dating, she sent me a picture of a baby skunk, and I fell in love. And I <laughs> but since, it's so, I always loved animals, but since I fell in love with the skunks last year, and started the whole Italian skunk whisper, <laughs> I love animals so much more now in my life. I love all animals so much. Oh. It's, it's just this past year, like, after the skunk thing, my heart just went... So much compassion and love for them now. You know, you see me, my videos, I'm always feeding feed a raccoon or <laughs> a skunk or whatever, you know. I do comedy for pigeons. <laughs> <laughs> I love pigeons. I saved one's life. Oh, you I didn't. Have, I did. I did. I'll, I'll tag you in, in, in the video. Yes, please. You know, I, I really did. And um, it was in New York and I, and I did it. And it broke my heart, but I, it, it got through and I got into a sanctuary. Oh, wow. It was, all stick, it was a sticky pigeon. It was, it was you know, look, I'm looking at it, and it's like, it had all these, like, uh, like pieces of paper and leaves stuck on it. And I'm looking at it. <laughs> and, 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 and the lady passed it up with her dog. It was just looking at it. It was such a, listen to this really fast story. I saw it. I was taking this lady to, it's, a, it's an all day ride because I do car service. You so do? I picked up this lady eight in the morning. I take her to Oneon to New York. It's a twelve hour round trip. I, I pick up this lady, I see the bird, I feel bad for it. I take it down I ask the guy, I go, Look, this bird is sticky. Can I take it down can I go downstairs? Is there a tub that I can wash it? So I go downstairs, I wash the bird. The guy at the hotel the guy at the hotel let me. So I came back I came back up, the lady started screaming at me, What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm here supposed to be your bird. <laughs> what are you doing? What did that bird not wash your hands? I put the bird in the bush. I put it back in the bush. I thought about that bird all day. I thought about it all day. Four, 14 hours, 14 hours later, I came back, dropped off that lady. Because it's an all-day trip with this lady. It's good money. It's like 500 bucks in one day. It's beautiful. I, I came back 14 hours later. I said, let me look in the bush. <laughs> I looked in the bush and I found the midget. The bird was there 14 hours later. Still stuck, like sticky. And um, I took him home with me and I tried to clean him up. I, I, I fed him and then I called a place and I brought it to this place and they took it and cleaned it up. And really stuck. Did you use Dawn detergent? Yeah, I did as much as I could. I did as much as I could, but I, um, I didn't want to like... <laughs> It was, it, they had the right solution at that place, you know, where they clean them up and everything. It was called, it was called the Raptors Trust. It was um, a bird sanctuary that they actually came and picked it up from a pet store. <laughs> and then they take and they clean them up and they release it, you know, so. How do you, I, I tried, how do you get so many laughs out of me in one story? <laughs> What's that? Oh, gosh, I don't know. I'm lucky, I'm lucky, or I just made you laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm killing with you. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> well, I, I, but is that crazy? I, I, I found this bird. I, I wanted to clean it. 14 hours later, I thought about it all day. I came home. It was still in the bush. 
It was all mixed up. It couldn't eat because it couldn't open up its wing. It was sticky. I tried to clean them again downstairs in the hotel or the, the, uh, the apartment building. Uh-huh. I couldn't do it, but I took it with me, and then I took it home. I fed them. Um, it, start, it seemed like it was, it was losing like hope, and then it started coming to life. And then I brought it to that place. The, um, it's called the Franklin Lakes Animal Hospital. And then the, a place called the Raptors Trust. They come once or twice a month, a week, I'm sorry, and they pick up uh, either orphan birds or, or uh, injured birds or whatever, and they can see what, and they do whatever they can do. You know, my grandmother, my mother's mother, she used to save birds and rehabilitate them. Really? That's, I, I, that's what I was gonna, I was going to do the, I was just about to take the course. It was a 10, 10 week course, two hour, two and a half hours a night for 10 weeks. It was, um, what do you call it? Uh, to, to animal rescue. Mm-hmm. So if it was a disaster, like a hurricane or a flood, people would come in and grab the people, put them on buses and bring them to hotels. And animal rescue people would grab the animals and put them in cages and stuff. I was going to do that. I was just going to take a class. And then I was going to volunteer with this lady for rehab apprentice, as a rehab apprentice. That's the cool one, I'm sure. You know, that's, I mean, I love to help the animals and, re- and uh, rescue them. Wow. The rehab apprentice is, is the one to play with like little little baby raccoons and, <laughs> and skunk and, or squirrel and bottle feed them, you know. Wow. I, 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 That's that so one. cool. What? I mean, birds, I mean, God, I love the birds and everything, everything out there. I love the birds, deer, bears, you know. I, I have a question. I have an important question. How do I, how do I tell my jokes to the pigeons and not have them fly away. <laughs> you should videotape because that, that's, a, that's a great sketch right there. I that's did. I, I posted it. I'll, I'll find the video and send it to you. They literally took like, off. <laughs> you, like, you know what I mean? That's so funny. You come out and, and you got the mic, hi guys, and then they fly away and then you're just like, what the hell? Like, what? Give me a chance. <laughs> I didn't even start yet. I didn't bomb. You know what I mean, you give me a tan. Uh, I was doing crowd work with the pigeons. I, I'm uh, honest. I was like, "So, where's everybody from? How are we doing tonight?" And they take off. That's so funny. It's, it would be so funny if somebody was filming you, and then they would like, "How you guys doing?" And then, but the pigeons were there. And then they would like, and then they would, the camera would go on the pigeons, their reaction, like you know, jumping around and stuff, and then back to you. Back to the pigeons would be great, you know, if they they could just stay still. (laughs) Remember the scene in the in the sitcom Friends where Rachel and Ross were on a vacation, and he screams out loud, "I we were on a vacation!" All the all the birds fly away. No, I didn't say. I didn't say it. I'm sorry. (laughs) It reminded me of that. (laughs) Wait, we were on a (laughs) vacation. What? I saw three. I saw the Three and a Half Men episode with, uh, I think, uh, Char- Charlie, not Charlie's son, Alan's son, right? What yeah. Was name? Little, uh, he let all these pigeons in Charlie's house, and it was a, it was like, it was like the birds in his house. Yes. In, his, in, one, in one of the rooms in his house. I remember that. I remember that. But yeah, but so she re- she re- rehabilitated birds. Yeah, she did. There, there's something about her house. I'm not kidding. All the time, birds would fly into her window. <laughs> Lynn, that, I mean, can I tell you something? If I had a crow, I would say I had like a like a a crow that would just like come every day, <laughs> land on my arm, I feed him, and then he just fly, you know, and fly away, just go back home, and I'd come every day, or a squirrel. When I was little growing up, there was this old, old couple, really elderly couple, on their porch. A squirrel used to come down the tree, go on their laps, they would feed it, you know, pet it, and then it would go back up the tree. <laughs> I don't, I would love to have that. I would, that's, I guess that's how you would have to rehabilitate an animal, you know? Yeah. You, you, you would have to rehabilitate it and, and, um, but you, you would have to know if you could release it or not if it get back in the wild because that's that's the, the, the problem what people don't like and the rehabilitators don't like. Somebody will take a wild animal and they'll take them as a baby and then they become a pet. 
and then when they re- then they get too big, they release them into the wild, and they they don't know how to live in the wild because they're so domesticated now. You know yes. I mean? So that's why that's why rehabbers get very mad and they're always like, if you find a baby, whatever bird, skunk raccoon, give it to a rehabber, give it to a wildlife person, because they'll know how to how to like um, they'll feed it, it'll grow up, and they'll prepare it to get back out in the wild. You know. Yeah. That's a important thing, and that's that. I just wish I, I had like that pet, that crow or a squirrel that would come every day, you know. Uh-huh. I got I, I got my skunks and raccoons, and you know. How are you with dogs and cats? I got the cat, you know. I got a couple cats, feral cats. <laughs> you know who's really great with that? All this stuff, Flicka. Paul Bond, you know, comedian Paul Bond. Yes. He's so he does. He goes out and he like. He feeds so many cats. He takes care of so many cats. Oh, he, really he is a cat whisperer. You know, he is. He's, and uh, I've donated a couple times. You know, he has a couple like thing, like um, it, and it's really for the money. You know, for, it's it's it, I mean for the, I mean it's the money that's needed for the food, their food. You know. Yeah. Because I think he really feels he feeds like hundreds of them. You know. And, wow. Uh, he's always out there. Him and his wife, they're always out there doing it. So every once in a while, when I can donate, I will give him a couple bucks, you know, for it. That's really cool. I knew a gal in California, and she didn't care if she had money to eat. She would take care of cats. Yeah, it just, it just, it, I don't know. It's, again, it, it's, they get your heart, you know, animals, certain animals. They, and, and just like they say, it's so true. Like sometimes. Yeah. They're better than humans. You know, they are. They're better than humans. What are you going to do differently after this whole lockup? Because has it made you a better human being or a better comic in one way or another? Um, I think we're all going to appreciate the life a lot more, right? Consciously think of it and appreciate it more, hopefully, right? Yes. And who knows when we're going to get back on stage? Are we going to get on back on stage with masks on? And the audience with masks on, it's really crazy. It's like they were talking about it and they were saying like, they, they were thinking like 2021. So I'm like, oh my God, like we're really, we're, we won't be able to get on stage at least for eight months or, so, or a year. Yeah. Like, it's so crazy. And I understand because even if they go, okay, everything's good. How many people are going to want to go to a Broadway show or a comedy show or, or anything you know, a, a baseball game sitting next to all people. People still aren't going to trust everybody, you know? Yes. They're still not going to trust. It's it's really crazy. Like, it's, it's, it's scary. It's so weird. It's so weird. Yeah, very weird. Let me get back to uh, your comedy. How, what year did you start doing comedy? And what the hell were you thinking to get into comedy? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, 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 want, I really wanted to do it at like 18, 19, but I was scared to death. So I think I did it once or twice until I was 30. Mm-hmm. And then I started really at 30. Nice. But I, I, but I was always the class clown, but I was always terrified to do it, you know? Yeah. I was always the class clown, but naturally I was always a natural class clown and funny guy. But, and I, I felt like because I am that way, I have to do this. Yes. But it took me a long time to not be a place but you know what it is i did it so half-assed so many people have done it on three to five times a week five ten times consistently and i never did it like that i did it so you know i did it i stopped sometimes i didn't do it you know, I, I chopped away at it i always say i would say maybe if i really put my mind to it i worked hard at it 10 years ago i could have been further ahead but whatever i mean it is it isn't what happened you know it's not fake but I do have to mention it, though. I got to say it. <laughs> if I did work harder, I, I believe something would have happened. But whatever. It's happening now, a little bit. Good. You know, I'm getting, but I mean, something's happening. I'm just, I got, you know, I got into a couple clubs. Yay. And, uh, Tell me the clubs. What clubs did you get into, Mario? The comic strip in New York and uh, Dangerfields. Those are the two spots. I wow. Wonderful. So that's awesome. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you very much. It's a big deal. People don't realize what a big deal that is, especially comic strip. You know, because at a certain age, 
uh, you're not always accepted there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, it's funny because, he, like, isn't it funny? Richie, the owner, lives in my town. Like, he lives in my town. Wow. So over the years, even when he failed me, before he passed me, and he failed me a couple times, he's, I knew him from my town and everything, and, and I would see him when I did the open mic night there. I yeah. would run into him sometimes, and into town. And then finally, I, I finally passed. And he's been a kind of a friend of mine, which is good. So he's, um, whatever, he lives in town. I, I, if he needs help, help with certain things, I help him. And he takes care of me, puts me on shows, gives me spots and stuff. Yeah. So, that's, that's Richie taking his, he's the, um, he was Eddie Murphy's manager. Imagine during Beverly Hills Cop. And what? Richie, the owner of the comic strip is named Richard Tinkin. He managed Eddie Murphy, Saturday Night Live, Beverly Hills Cop. I think 48 hours. I think he managed Adam Sandler. Wow. So just think of, but think of the five names that came through there. So like the biggest five, Ray Romano, Jerry Seinfeld, Adam Sandler, Chris Rock, Eddie Murphy. I mean, does it get any bigger than that? That's no. Like, Not. In, in seven, it start, when Seinfeld started there, 76, 1976. I'm a huge... I'm a huge Gladys Simon fan. She knows you know her. She knows you, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, She's I, known her for a long time. I I uh, lived in New York two or three times, and she's coached me. And I don't think you get any better than her. If if you don't know your comedy voice, if you don't know what the hell you're doing on stage, you need to get in front of Gladys. After she tells you what size bra to wear and what color your hair should be, then it, everything she everything she tells you is spot on and you better listen. Well, if she told you to color your hair, and it looks great, I like it. It's because of Gladys. And, she, and you're, you, you got a funny voice, you got a great voice, you know? Thank it's, you. It's, it's great. And you, you know what's funny? You always know you're, oh, I gotta, I need a voice. That's important. Just after 20 years of doing a half ass, like I said, I could have done more. You know. But if I think about it, like some guys did it three, five, some people five, 10 or 10, 20 spots a week. I didn't do 10, 20 spots in a year sometimes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm just saying. But um, what was that? Um, after 20 years, I finally said, I finally found my voice. Hey, I got to be Mario. I got to be me. I got to be that. The animated, just the way I am off stage, I gotta be that on stage. I can't be just sitting there with the microphone. I mean, how you guys doing? What's going on? You know, I can't be that. I have to be the <laughs> hyper, hyper talking, you know, I mean, physical, animated guy that, you know, yeah, on stage. So, like, so just recently, I said, wow, I finally found my voice. I what I gotta do now. I have more confidence. You know, I just gotta be natural, relaxed, and myself up there. And that's it. And, and Gladys is a great coach. She's a mentor to many. She's a great coach. Yes. I absolutely, I absolutely adore her. It's worth the $14 or whatever. I don't want to hear anybody bitch about paying her money. <laughs> Do you know how much it is an hour to get her? 150 or more. Wow. And you know, and you know what? If, if you think about it, it's, um, you're getting something for that, for that seven bucks. You can get a drink, right? Yeah. It's like, it's it's pretty much it's just the way it works. It's like Gladys says, I want to do an, an open mic at your your um at your club, and they say no problem. But you know what I mean? You're gonna get seven dollars, and we're gonna get seven dollars, right? Yeah. So you know, like at least they have to buy a drink. But it's all right. You know, it is expensive. Sometimes you think about it, you're like, could you know why? Because the other ones are usually five dollars or seven dollars. If you got to pay for a mic in the city, they're five bucks, right? Yeah. So the but, the glad of the comic strip was always fourteen, but hey, I did it so many times myself. I didn't mind. I got the free drink. Don't you miss Bob? Yeah, it's a shame. It's sad. Yeah, that sucks. You know. Yeah. How old was he? How old was he? He was in his eighties. God, God bless him. He was a veteran. He fought for this country and. Lord knows what all he had to do for us. I didn't even know that, Linda. 
Navy. Navy. Yeah, I was Navy veteran. And he was, uh, he was a good guy. Yeah. Bless him. He was, um, and, you know, it, it sucks because Gladys has got to be kind of lonely now, you know? Yeah. But I think she's, she's got friends that are coming by and supporting her and helping her, which is good, you know? What about Chario at Dangerfields? That was sad. Yes, yes. Chario, yeah. He was like the fixture there, right? He was there like 40 years, that guy. He was there. He, he was, I just think he was there with Rodney. They hung out with Rodney and, and, you know, the history of that place. I love it. I love it. People are always like, Dangerfield, it's like they never changed the rug. They never changed the curtain. It is so old. It's such a retro throwback, but it's like a museum. It is. You got to think of it like that. Like, I think of it like that. I say, no, it's not. It, it is old, but it's a museum. It's, it's freaking Rodney used to hang out there and, and work out and, and hang around and drink at the bar. And, you know, so when I go there, I'm always like, I, I can't believe that one. I can't believe I'm like. I can't believe this is the same stage as uh, his young comedian special. This was where it were all the, those people, like Seinfeld and Dice and Kinnison, they were all on this stage. I don't even believe it. I think it was like in a different part of the, of the room. It just is. Uh, it's surreal. It's I'm surreal. Like, I'm like, that one really gets me. That one's like, wow. That's. I'm like, I can't believe it. And doing, you know, the comments are the same. You know, it's, of course, I need Murphy's hand, but. Rodney's Young Comedian Special, which launched everybody's career. Roseanne, Seinfeld, Tim Allen, Dice, Kinnison. My God, everybody, everybody. Yeah. Ellen, Ellen DeGeneres, Louis, Louis Anderson. My God. Rodney was like, they always said he was the, um, he was the comic t that bridged the, old, the older generation with the new comics, you know? Wow. And, and, and launched so many others, so many so many careers my god he launched so many careers he was responsible for hey has this uh virus being shut down has that hit your pocketbook a lot it it did absolutely mm -hmm. and um i'm not spending a lot of money which is good i got the stimulus check was a blessing i got it i couldn't believe it i couldn't believe it i thought for sure i'm like you know, like on Wednesday, they were like on the news, mm -hmm. uh, five million people or whatever will be getting stimulus checks to deposit it. And I'm like, oh man, and I wish that was me. I hope mm -hmm. it's me. But I didn't think so. I'm thinking, I ain't going to get it. I'm going to have to call or whatever. <laughs> you know? Sure enough, the next day, the next day, Lynn, I checked my account, IRS $1,200. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. That's wonderful. My, <laughs> mine still hasn't arrived. <laughs> yeah, it'll come. Somebody told me because I do my income taxes direct deposit. Yeah, that's why I got it deposited. But but it's just I think it's just a loan. I think it's just a loan to us because we have to pay it back next year, or it's going to come out of our taxes next year. That's wow, but, which is okay. You know, I don't mind. So like, if you want to give me an advance and then you want to just take it out of my taxes next year, that's fine. I don't care. Yeah, yeah I didn't else. know it was a loan. But, you know, I'm just glad that they're doing something to help people get by. Yeah, it's, they're, they're working hard. They're, they're having, you know, they're manufacturing a lot of gloves and ventilators. They're doing whatever they can do. They, it's unprecedented. No one's ready for this. No one was ready. It's nobody's fault to blame. Unless the people who made it, like China, you know, if they <laughs> did. But... If there's nobody, I, I, who's, who's to blame? It's all over the world. All I'm over the saying. world. We're it's all... It's Trump's fault. It, <laughs> it's Trump's fault because it's all over the world that it's Trump's fault. It's ridiculous, right? We can't blame Trump for this, no matter how hard they try. Yeah, it shocks. Too bad we couldn't get him on this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm so tired of blaming and finding blame and fault and... People want being one up on each other. Can we get over it now and just be all in the same boat together? We we I, we should be like after nine eleven, everybody was like in peace and loved each other for at least a year or two afterwards. <laughs> like, everybody was so happy. Everybody was opening doors for everyone. I love <laughs> every. I love you. This one is like it's just it's just fueling the the uh, the political thing. Uh, it's just making things worse. 
instead of us coming together and being peaceful and trying to do the right thing, it's just, it seems like it's it's just fueling the fire. Terrible. Right? It's like when are people when are people going to be humane? I know. What's it going to take? If a pandemic won't make them behave, what will? A couple bullets or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I hope the guy never gets that. Yeah. That's why I feed my rac. That's why I love feeding my raccoons and skunks. And cats. <laughs> totally. Uh, they make me forget forget about all that, that craziness for for an hour or so. You know. Absolutely. You're a joy to interview. Are you accepting okay. Venmo or Cash App or PayPal donations? No, and, um, you know what? That's I think that's what a lot of people are doing. First of all, I just want to say it was great. To, thanks for uh, setting me up with the Zoom. I'm always like retro behind. <laughs> you know, I'm still, I'm still playing Atari. So you know, <laughs> I don't Super Mario. So I'm so retro, but I, I got my Zoom app thanks to you. I appreciate it. You know. Do you ever play Super Mario, Mario? Oh, well, honey, I'm sorry. Do you ever play Super Mario? No, I don't play any of those games, believe it or not. <laughs> I don't play any of them. But I got the app now. This is so cool. Yeah, now you... What were you saying? What? what were you saying? I'm sorry. Now you can interview people like Kevin Brennan and Gladys Simon. Yeah, right. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin now. He's just... He's cool. Like, he'll answer me like i'll text him i'll he'll answer me like that and if i see he's one of the only comics if i see in the city he'll say hey mario how are you oh none of the other guys like he'll say mario like like david tell will, will say hello to me but he doesn't know my name he won't address me by my name yeah and a couple other guys sir rod small you know some of the guys when we used to go to you know johnny t right you know our crazy friend johnny t yes so me and my Johnny T is one of my best buddies. We used to go do an open mic on Bleecker Street <laughs> from 9 to 11. And then at 11 o'clock, we would go hang out at the cellar. Yeah. And, and the guy would let us in. He would waive the $15 fee. Wow. So he would just be like, he would be like, you know, we were comics, so he was cool. So he was like, don't worry about the $15, but I have a couple drinks and buy some wings or something, you know? Yeah. And we were like, yeah, no problem. So every week we would saw a tell... I see. Bob, I met Bob Saget. What? Where'd you go? Where'd the video go? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. What happened to the audio? Uh, by my name. <laughs> there, the audio went away. Hey man, hey man. But Kevin, Kevin Brennan will say. Uh, he'll say hi Mario or or Lenny Marcus too. You know Lenny Marcus? Yes, I love him. Lenny will say hi Mario, Mario, because I, I've known him for a while and uh, he did some editing work for me, I, I believe, one time. My maiden name was Marcus, so I I hit Lenny up and said, "Let's find out if we're related." <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. What about you, Lynn? You were, you were doing some stuff in Jersey and New York, right? Yeah, I was in Philadelphia for a year and bouncing back and forth. And then a year before that, I was up in Ardsley living with George Saltz. And he was, yeah, he's a like 80 some year old comic that came in late after his wife passed on. And he was, I was renting from him and he was coaching me. He's, and you know what? He's really, George is really funny. He's a real funny guy. He's really talented. I love him. I love that he's he's still going strong and doing it, and he's good. And he's funny. Yes. I, I love him. You know, and he's old school retro comedy, which is, you know, such a rare treat. And he's not going to change for nobody. And, and he's got the timing down perfectly. He knows how to deliver a joke. He, he's a great writer. So. Yeah, yeah, he's good. He's great. I love it. I love it. I don't. I, what, you know what? You're right. He, he's like a cool throwback to to like a retro cat skills, but it's great. I love it. I enjoy it. Yeah. It's funny. It's good. You know yeah. What I mean? Yeah. One of, the, one of the last of the Mohicans to do that, right? Thank you. Exactly. Yeah. 
That was fun living living with him. There was deer in his backyard every day. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Well, so I'm, so, I'm so glad we did this. I'm so glad. Me yeah, too. I'm very happy. You're an absolute riot to talk to. So tell me, um, how are you going to be a better human or a better comic because of the COVID-19? <laughs> <laughs> Look at you. Oh, I'm about to think of that. <laughs> For $1,000, Alex. Oh, my God. Um, you know what? I'm, I'm hoping to God I come out with more material. Yeah. I hope my regular jokes are polished better mm -hmm. and new material. Of course, I definitely, if I could do all this, this would be beautiful. You know, write, don't be lazy, plenty of time to write, not, you know, do that, come out with material. Exercise, <laughs> that's so matter, you know, I can lose 40 pounds <laughs> instead of sitting in the bed and, and throwing a Twinkies down my throat. I can, you know, gotta, gotta get up, start taking walks, you know, and um, start doing some push-ups and setups because you can't go to a gym. Yes. If I can write, if, if I can write and, and exercise a little bit. I do some, um, go to the Instagram mm -hmm. with the Italian Skunk Whisper. <laughs> oh, wait. Instagram. Your Instagram is called the Italian Skunk Whisper? Yes. That's that's my, um, well, I have my page, Mario Gentile, and then the, no, 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 I don't have it on, on Instagram. Yeah, I got to get it made up. I got to get somebody to do it from my friend who, who put me on, my friend who set me up on my regular Instagram account. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to see him now for him to make me the Italian Skunk Whisper account. But the Italian Skunk Whisper is on Facebook and YouTube. You can on Facebook and YouTube, the Italian Skunk Whisper. I have my own pages, but or an own, um, what is it? Whatever. On, on, well, my page is on Facebook. I don't know what they call it on YouTube. Your, your site, I don't know. Whatever. Your uh, YouTube page. What? Yeah, YouTube and and um, Facebook, but I have to go to Instagram because I have to make them shorter. Make them like one to five minute, opposed <laughs> to ten to fifteen minute. You know. Well, don't worry because these millennials are going to drive you mashugana. They're going to come up with TikTok and Tactic and EXO and kick my butt. They're going to come up with something new every day for you to chase your arse around the clock. Yeah, right. You can't keep up with these millennials. <laughs> oh, my God, you're right. Hey, but, but you know what? You answered my question. I didn't even answer your question. You're like, how, how am I going to become a better person? Yeah. Well, I think so. I think if I if I write and I and I punch up my jokes regular, and if I exercise and lose some weight, and if I do some good videos on uh, the Italian skunk, whisper, at least I'll be productive. <laughs> and if you see a 69-year-old blonde lady walking in New York City, are you going to hold the door open or slam it in her face? <laughs> I don't know. It depends. Who knows if she's wearing a Hillary hat or, 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 uh, what do you call, or Biden hat. <laughs> Make America great again. <laughs> well, it all depends on our politics. And you know what? It wasn't, there wasn't a mess back in 2001. <laughs> 9-11, there wasn't, it wasn't like crazy politic bullshit back then, you know? Thank you. It wasn't. Like now, it's a, uh, it's a mess. It should bring us together, though. Shouldn't it bring us together? Be peaceful and. I think everybody needs about five pounds of marijuana, and five doses of Namaste or something, because they're they're acting like morons. Sounds good. Sounds <laughs> good. I'm in. I'm well, in. I love you, and I want everybody that knows me to love you. So, thank you for doing the interview. Mario Gentile. Oh, I love you. I love I love you. you too. Thanks, for, thanks for interviewing. I love you and keep in touch. And yes. Text me. You know, we'll, we'll keep in touch, definitely. Thank and you. Now, can, I, can I watch this over again? Can I watch this? Yes. It's going to be on my Facebook wall any, any minute now. And I have this okay. tech guy named Adam Dominguez. His, he's the best. And he's going to... Okay. He's uploaded 90 videos onto my YouTube, and the next batch, you'll be on that, and it'll be on my YouTube, which is comedian as if. Comedian Linda Marcus-Smith. Okay, 
Okay, let me know. Please give me text me and let me know. I will. I'll send you a text right. the, the minute I hang up on you. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Just let me know how to watch it. I can watch it in the future, tomorrow, whatever. You, know, you got it. I'm going to I'm gonna text you when I get off of here. Love you lots. Great talking to you. Good talking Great to you. Talking to you. Thank you for it's nice talking to you, but I'm not going to forget about it. <laughs> T-A-W, T-A-W, right? Yeah. See you later. I, you know what? I, I, talk is still better than talk. <laughs> <laughs> Love, you. Love you. Bye.